Well, that's not going to fit in there. If you're new to the Thunder Laser Bolt, it has a really helpful feature. Not only is it helpful, but it's going to save you money. Today on Laser Nug. Your bolt has a 12 inch by 20 inch workspace. But if you're new to lasers, especially if you live here in Canada, you probably found out pretty quickly that if you're ordering any types of materials such as acrylic, plywood, Baltic birch, MDF, Romark, any of these types of materials come in either full sheets, half sheets, or quarter sheets. And that smallest quarter sheet you can get is a 12 by 24 inch sheet. But that's not a problem. Okay, just jump in the light burn and come on over here to the left side toolbar, hit your pencil command. You're just gonna draw a line, it doesn't have to be long, it just needs to be perfectly horizontal. I'm gonna press escape on there, that should end it. Yep, I'm gonna come back over here, click my selection tool. I'm gonna highlight that line. I'm gonna come up to the top here, and I know that this piece should be 11 and 7 eighths. So I'm just gonna make this 11.9 inches in width. It's currently on a black fill, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna make this a line. So I'm gonna click it and make it red. And I'm gonna run down here to the bottom to my library. If you good folks haven't seen the video where you can get that free materials library from Thunderbolt or Thunder Laser USA, I'll put a link to it right here. But in there you're gonna find under the library there's an acrylic setting. I don't wanna engrave and my acrylic that I'm working with is 1 8 or 0.11 inch and I need a cut setting for it. My line or my CO2 layer is highlighted. I'm gonna assign that layer to it. I haven't tested it yet, but I hope it's gonna work. And if it doesn't, then I'll just cut it a second time. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my laser. I'm just gonna come down here to user origin and I'm gonna change the origin to just the middle left, which should be at the end of the line. I think I'm in good shape. I'm gonna press send. Measure the length you want and then mark it on your material. I'm gonna open the door on the bolt. I'm gonna slide my material in. You wanna make sure that your material is square or butt up right up against the X axis ruler. And then grab your lay flat pins and make sure you hold it down. If your material is much longer, probably a great idea to grab one of your saw horses and hold up the other end of the material as well. Then come to the left side of the machine and open up your utility door. As you're aware, the bolt has a number of different safety features, including safety switches on both doors. That's to ensure that you don't run the laser if either one of the doors is not properly closed. So you need to bypass that. And Thunder Laser has put a switch right here. All you need to do is press that switch and that will disable the safety switch on the front door. You'll see that the light is flashing red. That's just another notification to you that one of the switches is disabled. Now I'm gonna run my laser over. I'm gonna autofocus. I'm gonna set up my origin. I'm gonna put my laser safety glasses on and I'm gonna run my job. The job's complete. Uh, nice clean cut. So those settings in that library does work. Excellent. Now that I'm done, I'm gonna push the button again. Watch what happens to your warning light once I've re-engaged the safety. That now confirms to me that we're safe. The safety is back on and we can operate as we normally do.
and it's that easy. Another really helpful feature. I'm not sure if you actually need to wear safety glasses or not. I just do just in case. I would just imagine you just don't look in the side of the laser when it's running. But hey, I hope it was helpful for you good folks. If you're Canadian, I've got a few other pieces of information I wanted to share and also a couple of questions to ask you good folks if you could stick around a few more minutes. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out a few more minutes. If you folks are new to lasers like I am, you're probably quickly finding out that unlike the US, there does not seem to be a lot of laser goods suppliers. Uh, they're few and far between. They seem pretty plentiful down in the US all over the place, but up here, I'm having a difficult time finding them. I found a couple of suppliers and just for some goods. And there's a few things that I wanted to pass along to you if you are new that you're gonna find and I just wanted to prepare you or to help you out a little bit. When it comes to flat materials, such as your MDF, uh, Baltic birch, your craft plywood, that's with your veneer and it's got MDF in the middle, uh, your Romark, your acrylics, colored or otherwise, uh, leatherette, these types of things, there's only a few suppliers I've found that provide some of these. But what I'm finding is, you're, in most cases, you're gonna find the supplier will not provide a 12 by 20 sheet. And if they do, it's because they charge you cut fees to cut the board down. So for example, your acrylics or your plywoods, they often come to the supplier in a 24 by 48 inch sheet. So they'll sell you a full sheet or a half sheet or a quarter sheet and your quarter sheet being 12 by 24. And in one case, one supplier will cut it down for me, but they charge me a fee to do that. And this is my point about that simple feature that the bolt has. You save that cut fee by just ordering the quarter sheet and cutting it off. And by all means, if you've got a fine tooth carbide blade on your table saw, or you have a table saw, you can cut the sheets yourself, of course. But it's much cleaner and easier with the edge to be able to laser that edge so you don't get tooth marks across the edge, especially on the acrylic. The second thing, there's an added benefit to getting that extra four by 12 inch sheet, especially when you're just trying to learn settings or you're testing materials for settings, is now you've got a separate piece that you can do a lot of your testing on so that you don't ruin the full piece when it comes time to do a project. Or if say, for example, you've got the material and you haven't used it for a while or you haven't used your settings for a while, you've got a scrap piece that you're able to do a little test run before you do that paying project on it. One thing that I have found that's a kind of consistent across all three of them to some degree is that although I think overall the quality is reasonably good and maybe towards high, the cut quality is not often very consistent. And I'll give you a great example of it right here. I'm just about to start working with colored acrylics so I ordered a number of different colors from one supplier. Now granted, they're supposed to be quarter sheets, so they're 12 by 24, but keep in mind that just like on the laser or anything else you do in the workshop, you're never gonna get 12 by 24. You're gonna get probably 11 and 7 eighths, or thereabouts, by 23 and 7 eighths, thereabouts. Because remember, there's a kerf, right? Every time they run a saw through the material. But this is where the inconsistency comes. Hopefully you can see that. I've measured this. It's more than a quarter inch shorter than it should be. And when you're paying the prices for this type of material, this is the inconsistency that I wanted to reference. And this video is not about who's a good supplier, who isn't. It's just what you're gonna expect from this is that there should be a reasonable consistency to the size of the sheets that you're paying for. But this inconsistency you're gonna find at least with some of the few suppliers we have to choose from, is that when you're missing more than a quarter inch off of that sheet for 24 inches, and you're paying the kind of money that we have to pay for this acrylic, that's a lot of material gone. But you're gonna see that this is somewhat consistent across all three of them. For some reason, they're not all consistently cut. So I just wanted to pass on what I do myself now when I get materials from either three of them. The first thing I'm gonna do is I measure the sheet, the dimensions of it, to make sure that it's reasonably close to that cut. The second thing I do is I just take a simple square and I check the piece on all sides to see if it's square. Honestly, about 50, maybe 60% of the time, the pieces are not actually cut square when they come to you. So what I often will do is I'll put a little mark with an X. So I'll make a square, put a little X, 
with either a pencil on the wood or a marker on the acrylic so that whenever I go to pull this out of my stock, I remember this piece is not square on one side because it's important that when you're pushing your piece into the bolt and you're able to corner it up against the X and Y rulers that you know when you're cutting your piece out, the laser is not gonna slide off a piece that's not sitting square. Last thing I do, I check all the edges because you're gonna find, especially when it comes to the craft board or the plywoods, quite often you're gonna find chips out of one edge or out of two edges. And so what I'll do with a pencil is I will mark little X's on there. Again, so that when I'm pulling the piece out two weeks from now or two months from now, I can easily identify A, if the piece was square, and two, which one of the edges has the, the chips on it. So that's a wrap for another video. I hope the information was helpful. If you are here in Canada or Ontario, if you have found a supplier that you're very happy with the quality of the products that you're buying, it'd be great if you could leave it down in the comments for us all. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.